Hello there. I am right along Highway 93, um, just north of the Idaho-Nevada border. So this is the highway that south this way will take you down to Wells and Jackpot and uh, eventually Las Vegas if you follow it far enough. Uh, and then this is north heading towards Twin Falls. Um, and I'm here right by this road in a very not spectacular location because right off the highway here uh, is something that most people think are pretty exciting. They like to collect them. And I thought we'd explain a little bit about how these somewhat fun and unique geologic features form, and that is geodes. Now, when you think of geodes, uh, technically the definition of a geode would be a somewhat spherical rock body that's hollow on the inside. If it is um, completely filled in with mineral, mineral material, we typically call those thunder eggs. Um, and some of you are much bigger rock hounds than I am, and so we could argue or, or discuss um, definitions and that and uh, semantics that's what I understand um, so hopefully that jives pretty well with what you already know uh, but this outcrop here in the area we're in uh, has extensive deposits of rhyolite so these benches over here on Brown's bench to the west all those layers over there are layer upon layer of rhyolites and a lot of this rhyolite was actually emplaced as pyroclastic flows so big explosive eruptions from the Yellowstone volcano, but when it was in the Twin Falls area or a little bit west of here near Bruno Jarbage, there was big eruptive centers eight to 10 million years ago having explosive eruptions of silica rich ash that inundated the landscape. Uh, and that sort of sets the stage for these geodes is um, the geodes we're gonna see here are lined with a type of quartz called calcidney. And that uh, having quartz on the inside of the geode somewhat necessitates that you've got a source of silica nearby. So the source of silica that lines the geodes is in fact the very rocks that there that just dominate this landscape. The rhyolites, the welded tufts, the vitrophyres, which are these glassy kind of obsidian but somewhat crystallized type rocks. Again, highway right here. Uh, my truck's literally like a stone's throw away. Uh, if we look right over the fence here, this is a BLM site, but there are some little hills you can see some places where people have dug a little bit here. So there's some geode collecting sites here. Uh, but let's look at these geodes here and then we'll look at them in actual uh, outcrop. So here's a few that I've collected, um, some of which have been have broken open, some of which haven't. Uh, but what you can see here is that the geodes are kind of lined with this concentric band of kind of white to creamy, somewhat translucent, uh, material and this again is a type of quartz a microcrystalline quartz variety called calcidney I'll spell it for you here in a second too or show you on paper and so a little different than you know maybe some geodes you're thinking of where there's big uh, exciting crystals on the inside so these don't have crystal points or projections sticking out into the interior instead we just have this mineral deposit uh, lining the interiors and let's look at these things in outcrop and then I'll explain how these form. And so right here next to us is some kind of dark gray to black vitrophere. But if I kind of sweep away a little bit of the material, you'll see these rounded spherical masses embedded in the vitrophere. Um, if we come over here, we can see the same thing but here we can actually see these are broken open and have that white um, calcidney layer on the interior. Um, let's see, a couple other spots here. So just crouch down here and sit by the fence. Um, another one right here embedded. So you can see these kind of bulbous masses sticking out in random places. There's one here, one here. Um, so these are the geodes actually still encased and embedded in the rock. Um, and so these eventually weather out, believe it or not. And you can kind of get a sense here. You can see that these, the geodes are actually forming uh, higher relief features. They're actually harder than this black glassy uh, kind of vitrophere rhyolite, which is intensely kind of shattered and fractured. And so this kind of weathers kind of quickly. These eventually weather out 
and then you get these spherical things which just kind of sit on the ground. So this one you'd obviously have to work for a little bit to dig it out, but it wouldn't take too much effort. Other people are just finding places where these are on the ground or just in some soil uh, and then digging them out. And so part of the fun with geodes for a lot of people is uh, taking them and splitting them open. And you can break them open with a hammer or you could cut them open with uh, a rock saw or a tile saw if you don't have one of those. But the idea here is just, you know, whack it open. This one had a bunch of soil on the inside, but there you go. You've got this nice hollow geode. You could probably clean that up a little bit. Um, you know, what's the value of these things? Not much, um, but you know, something to put on the mantel shelf or something to kind of, you know, just something to keep you kind of occupied. Um, we can break a couple more open here and then I'll explain how these fun little guys form. And most of them look the same, so I don't expect much in terms of variety. It's really more a matter of like how how pristine will it be on the inside or how much, you know. So there's a little bit of other kind of, this may be some caliche that kind of infiltrated and coated over the chalcedony here. And you might get some shades of kind of deep gray, uh, maybe a little bit of blue or purple in some of these. So people have a lot of fun just kind of coming out here, spending time outside, uh, breaking these open or taking them back to uh, their shop to cut. But let's go ahead and look at a simple little diagram here to explain how these form. So how do these geodes actually form? Well, they can form in different rock types, but out here in Southern Idaho, they're dominantly found in different types of uh, lava flows or welded tufts, which are ash deposits. So in any eruptive event, because we have gases present when the eruption's taking place, we might get gas bubbles in the rock material and once the lava or the ash cools and crystallizes to form rock. And these gas bubbles are what we call vesicles. Uh, so that's our fancy name for just a gas bubble in a volcanic rock. Now a lot of times the vesicles are really small um, they're not very large, but in these rhyolites, a lot of the, um, the vapor and gas uh, actually makes bigger uh, vesicles than we would typically see. So they're these kind of softball to golf ball size features. So that's step one, is to get a geode, we need a pore space, we need an opening, a spherical uh, hole in the rock in which we can precipitate the material. So that would be stage one. And then the second thing we need is we need to bury the deposit. So here I've taken these vesicles, buried them beneath some younger rocks. Um, and then we need water. And we need groundwater to pass through uh, these vesicles and these rocks. Now, there's a good chance that sometime after these vesicles and these rhyolites were deposited, that the groundwater was hot. Think of Yellowstone, right? Yellowstone was here uh, eight to 10 or so million years ago. So there's a very good chance that we had hydrothermal conditions, hot groundwater moving through the rocks themselves. And the reason that hot water is, is preferential is if you can get water that's hot, the hotter it is, the more material you can dissolve in it. So think of again, like your you know, sugar in your coffee or your tea or whatever, the hotter the liquid is, the more you can get that sugar dissolved and in solution. So in this case, if we have hot groundwater passing through our rhyolites or our lavas or our ash tufts, um, we can transport more silica into these voids where eventually it's precipitated or deposited in these concentric rings lining the cavity of the rock. So sort of this rind uh, of chalcedony. And there's how you spell that, that fancy word there, C-H-A-L-C-E-D-O-N-Y. You can't read my lousy handwriting there. So then we've got the uh, incipient, incipient uh, geodes forming in our volcanic rock. And so I didn't draw the next stage, but the next stage would just be to weather and erode the slightly softer volcanic rock around the geodes, allowing these to kind of make their way to the surface, like we see here sticking out of the rock, eventually weather out completely so that they're loose from the rock, uh, and then they can form these nice little geodes here. So fun little video here, just all about geodes. I think there's a couple other processes that these may form by, uh, but this is a dominant one, especially in volcanic areas such as here in Southern Idaho. So hope you enjoyed uh, our little story about how geodes form in rocks.